Hi, this is Ted Pattison with another video in the Fast Break with Power BI Desktop video series. In this extremely fast-paced video title, we'll look at creating a calendar table using DAX. Now, before we create our own calendar table, let's look at the built-in functionality in Power BI Desktop to create a date hierarchy. So, for example, we have a purchase date column in the sales table. Let's make sure the purchase date column is visible in report view. And once we do that, we're now just going to drop the purchase date column into a well in the fields pane. Now, note that when I do this, it creates a hierarchy of year, quarter, month, and day. Now, this date hierarchy that's been automatically created by Power BI Desktop serves kind of the same role as a calendar table in the fact that you can break out rows in the sales table by year, quarter, and month. We're just not going to have as much control. So let's go ahead and build a calendar table. The way that we're going to do that is to click on New Table inside of the Modeling tab. And at first, let's create a table named Calendar, and we'll use Calendar Auto. Now, Calendar Auto looks at all the date time columns in your project, and it finds that there's a birth date column for customer, and so it has the start date 1918. That's not going to cut it. So what we're going to do is we're going to not use Calendar Auto, but we're going to use the Calendar function. And at first, I can hard code in the first and last day. If your calendar table is something where your fiscal year and your calendar year are the same, your calendar table should start January 1st and end December 31st. So we could basically put in the year range of 2012 to 2015, and now I've got the rows for my calendar table. Now, we're going to create something a little bit better that dynamically looks at the purchase date column. And the reason for this is that as we refresh data and new data from 2016 flows into the data model, we want this to automatically handle that scenario. We'll modify our DAX to figure out the start year from the minimum purchase date and the ending year from the maximum purchase date. Now the DAX code is complete to generate the rows for our calendar table. We'll take the date column, which is automatically created with the calendar table, and we'll set our formatting. Next, we add a calculated column for every time dimension we want to add to our calendar table. We'll create a new calculated column named year using the DAX year function. Next, we'll create a calculated column named quarter. Now, we're going to use the format function, and if I use the format code of Q on a date, it will return the quarter, one, two, three, or four. Now, instead of just having the number, we're going to add the year, and then we're going to add some literal text, hyphen Q. So basically, we'll say 2012 hyphen Q1, Q2. Next, we're going to add the month column, and that's going to bring in an issue of sorting. So we'll create our month column by using the format function and using a formatting code of capital MMM, small YYYY, to have the abbreviated month and the year. When the month column is sorted alphabetically, April comes before January. That doesn't work. We need to create a sort column named month sort using a formatting code with the year and month number, and then we configure that as the sort column. The month sort column now sorts chronologically and alphabetically at the same time and determines the sorting for month. Next, we'll add a new column, month in year, which has the three character abbreviated month name, but without the year. And when we do that, we're gonna to have to add a sort column, and we can just use the month function to determine the value of the month in year sort column, and then set that as the sort column. Finally, we're going to add a final column based on day and week. So we can basically call out Monday versus Tuesday versus Wednesday. And as we do that, we're going to go ahead and use format, and we're going to use the three character DDD for the abbreviated day. The day of week column will need help sorting, so the days of the week aren't sorted alphabetically. We add day of week sort, we use the weekday column, and we pass a second parameter value of two, so Monday is the first day of the week. Once I've created the columns I need, I integrate the calendar table into the data model by creating a relationship between its date column and the purchase date column in sales. Now I can begin to use my calendar table to create reports. So let's take two of the columns, day and week and year, and create a matrix based on that. And you can see that any one of the dimensions I can call out as either the column headers or the row headers inside. I'll create a second matrix and we'll use month and year and year to supply both the row headers and column labels. Note I can move them around. If I want to pull one of the columns out and add another one, it just gives me an easy way to break down 
my time-based data by any dimension. Once again, this is Ted Pattison. I'd like to thank you for watching and leave you with a call to action. If you want to join a great, passionate group of smart people, come join us at pbiug.com, the Power BI user group. If you're looking for hands-on training, come visit us at criticalpathtraining.com, home of Power BI Bootcamp and Power BI Developer Bootcamp.